forecast is for rain, rain, and more rain. or me or even any of my colleagues a bunch of W's. I'll tell you what, you people, <laughs> bloody jobs worse, that's what you are. I don't like me at all. I could have cried. Manchester Airport is Monarch's northern base. Every week at the height of the summer season, over 30,000 of their passengers pass through the terminal. Can I bring you around here, folks? Check-in supervisor Amanda McLenahan makes sure everyone's in the right queue. We've got a couple of flights on the go here, and we've got majority of the passengers tend to turn up at once. So that's why I'm, I'm here, hands on hip, no go. So, order. We need order. We've been here, we've been here an hour and a half in the queue. We said we can't get on the plane because someone put us in the wrong queue. We got moved three times to three different check-ins. You had two problems with the baggage belt. OK. okay. That is not our problem. OK. We've got moved. These passengers are late for their early morning flight to Cancun, Mexico, and they've been taking it out on Amanda. It's not my fault that every single one of you are not on the ball enough to know that that was the Kinthos only. Manchester Airport, disgraceful. You told us, we're not going on this flight because the captain will not accept us. His decision is final, yes, we know that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are going to stay here. OK. Let's on a flight, ASAP. Well, you're in for a very long wait. Well, no, just delay the flight. We can go there. What's the problem? What is the problem with that? I don't get it. That flight there was for Zakynthos only. Now, how come all the other passengers for Zakynthos and all the other ones for Cancun? Just a minute! You've all had your say. Let me have my say. Tell you what, when you're going to listen to what I have to say, I don't want to speak to you. What it boils down to is we're on time, we did exactly what we're told to do. Lack of communication. The Cancun passengers who were in the right queue are now getting ready to board. For Chris Jewett and Leslie Beige, this is a very special trip. We're going to get married. We are actually getting married on the hotel grounds and then we're going onto the beach for the photos and everything. <laughs> and we've got a long, well, big ivory wedding dress and these two are page boys. I suppose it's just like a, a fairy tale wedding, mm. isn't it, really? It's just, I don't know, just... We've planned it so much, we just hope it's going to be perfect, don't we? Just... Back in the check-in hall, with 25 minutes to departure, Amanda's managed to talk the captain into letting her passengers on board. Whoever called our lot, or me, or even any of my colleagues, a bunch of W's... I don't know who it was, but we apologise. We're sorry and we didn't mean it. We're just a little bit heated. Like us. But they've gone. They're out my face, so... Another happy ending. Hooray. Another flight preparing for departure is the plane to Portugal. So you do need to get a change, but we'll see where yeah. we can actually get on the flight today. Yeah. But just bear with us, I need to get in touch with Luke. All right, all right. Well, it sets off at seven. Amanda's colleague, Michael Shelbourne, also deals with passenger problems. Yeah, just been given this passport, has been damaged by a dog. Um, because the numbers are missing at the bottom, we'll have to wait and see whether Luton will actually accept them for the flight. I left the passport out last night so I didn't forget it, and uh, I've woken up and it's uh, in shreds, basically. It's probably one of the worst ones I've seen. I've seen them with grease and stuff over, but never that bad by a dog. There's a Tibetan terrier called Holly. It doesn't look like a dog, it's probably a horse. It's something huge. <laughs> Peter Greenwell is supposed to be going to Faro for a golfing holiday. Unless Michael can get permission for him to fly, Peter won't be teeing off today. Right, OK. No problem. All right, then, cheers. Bye. Faro's refused. So we won't be able to travel today until he gets his passport sorted. Fortunately, they won't allow you in. 
No, they've been in touch with Fara and because of the passport, the numbers on the bottom are missing that they can't match them against those who won't actually allow you entry. But those numbers are the same as these numbers here. Yeah, but there's some that we're missing off the front of it because it's not intact, they won't allow you to travel. Absolutely bloody ridiculous. I'll tell you what, you people, bloody jobs worse, that's what you want. It's not really, it's the airline will get yeah. fined. It's obviously it's a, it's it's a immigration of It's a passport, well, it's got all the details there. I know that, but immigration of FARA will not allow you in. Well, well I'm some kind of bloody big drug smuggler or something. Well, I can't, I can't, I can't answer for immigration at FARA. They won't actually allow you in because the passport numbers are missing at the bottom corner. So you'll need to get the passport changed. Bloody ridiculous. Peter will have to get new documents from the passport office in Liverpool before he can find out if there's another flight available. It's an official document, it's supposed to be intact and they should know that before they travel. If the dog chews a passport in the middle of the night, there's not a great deal I could do about it. I've come along here with the passport, it's got all the details on it as far as I'm concerned. I think they're just being jobsless, basically. Um, it's a case of uh, giving them something to do. 180 miles down the road is the Monarch Training Centre in Luton. If he does say evacuate, evacuate, how do you open this door for the emergency evacuation? Just pull the handle over, and then how is this door take out? Yeah. Over. A new batch of cabin crew recruits are learning the emergency drills. 19-year-old Nick Robotham is only five foot three, but he's confident he'll measure up. Got it, wasted. This is just like nothing I've ever done before. I mean, I've worked in a bar, I've worked in a big retail store, and uh, obviously they've got health and safety. This is just nothing like that. This is totally in another league. You shouldn't be really laughing about it, but it is a lot of fun. But 21-year-old Gemma Derns is starting to feel the pressure. Basically, we've got four days, three or four days left of our training. So, and we might have a flight in five days where we have to do a familiarisation flight where we follow a member of crew and you need to know what you're doing. Pull the cover up. Yeah. Oh, my God! Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just really nervous about the orders. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I'm just going to have to be waiting and told what to do and then... I do have an idea, but I'm just... I'll prefer to do it and then I'll know. <laughs> Before they can fly, trainees must master the emergency doors. Cancun in Mexico is the airline's furthest flung destination and is a popular romantic resort. Chris Jewett has taken his bride-to-be, Leslie, swimming with dolphins as a pre-wedding treat. I just can't believe it. I'm going to actually do it. And... It's mad, isn't it? <laughs> Um, she's always liked dolphins and they're very spiritual, so she's always wanted to go somewhere to, to see them. But with only hours to the wedding, Leslie's nerves are kicking in. Now it's come, I'm just... Oh, I can't wait, really. It's just the heat I'm bothered about, cos my hair will flop. That's the only thing I'm bothered about. <laughs> Isn't it? But, no, it should be fine. I'll have to spell it. D -E Passport problems are an everyday occurrence for Michael, but in his seven years on the job, he's still amazed by the state of people's passport photos. I think probably the machines are probably to fault on most of them um, because they, it's, some of them look really shocked because they don't know when the, obviously when the flash is going to happen, I don't think. I mean, they all look like convicts, most people. Um, or they've all got long hair or moustaches or something and they didn't have, and that's only the women. Have a look at his passport yeah, photo. It's worth seeing. <laughs> Go on, Wayne. Go on. <laughs> it expires next year and I'm Three looking forward to it expiring as well. <laughs> Who the f is that? That's fucking <laughs> <laughs> That when he was doing? slim. <laughs> it's absolutely horrible. The trouble is when you white hair, these photo booths have a grey curtain, so your hair disappears. I don't know when I go. Do you speak any English? When I go out of here in the sun, it will 
go flat. You when when I leave here, when you've done my hair, uh -huh. I go outside because uh -huh. of the sun, um, my hair's not going to go flat. Uh -huh. Okay. At the El Poblito Hotel, Leslie is getting ready for the ceremony. And so is Chris. Preparation is very easy for me. Just a bit of a shower, a shave, um, a bit of aftershave, and that's it. Oh, this is going to be so hard. Don't speak English, do they? It makes me glad to be a bloke, not having to faff about with a makeup or hair or anything like that. It's now just two hours until Leslie walks down the aisle. And I feel really, really nervous now. I have nothing to eat whatsoever. I just feel so sick. Excited, but sick. It's costing about £5,000 in total. In that, we've got the holiday. We've um, got the wedding here, the champagne, and the cake, mariachi band. You know, once Leslie gets to the chapel today, she'll hopefully it'll just touch her and just let her know how much you love her. But Leslie's hairdo isn't going to plan. I think this is what I was dreading. <sighs> that was my worst nightmare, wasn't it? My hair. It still is because I feel sick now. <laughs> Afternoon. Could I have a look at your ticket, please? Yeah, you just throw here. Um, it's just... Back in England, it's a big day for the Monarch cabin crew trainees. They're preparing for a two and a half hour mock up flight. I'm really nervous to say that I might be flying next week. The safety, I'm fine, and it's just the cabin services that it's harder than what you think. <laughs> <laughs> and for Gemma, it's not started well. I want to cry! <laughs> Shall we try it from the top again? <laughs> uh, we're just about to serve um, the main meal, which is beef in mushroom sauce today. Very good. They're all working very well as a team. As an added test, Fellow trainee Nick has been told to act up. There you go, sir. Enjoy your meal. Oh! I just knocked it all over me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my pants. I've just oh gone. Um, Have you a clock? It... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe remove your pants. Yes, I think pants I will. It's burning. And um, we'll get you some. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that, would I? I'm feeling tired already and it's not even a real fight. <laughs> I think I've done everything wrong. <laughs> Out in Cancun, Mexico, Leslie's hairdressers are struggling to get her ready in time for the wedding. I don't think I'll be able to play with this, it's like wire. She's very worried about the hairdressers. You know, if, if it's not right on the day, she'll never fit. I don't like me at all. I've got to cry now. I don't even have a comb, so I'm not bothered. What can you say? She'd come back to the room and she'd have to do it all again. Wash it and then blow dry it again, and she lost all the money. <laughs> I just want to go and do it myself. <laughs> I feel like Queen Elizabeth. More yeah, but are you? It's fine. No, it's okay. How many ways to go on that flight? There's eight. At the sales desk in Manchester, Michelle Foster is trying to get a standby passenger on a scheduled flight to Alicante. I'm going because my sister's getting my it's her thirtieth birthday, and it's also going to be an engagement party as well. I'm only trying to go for one day. Um, we haven't got Michelle doesn't realise she's dealing with the number one pop star, Paul Marazzi from boy band A1. Hi, mum. <coughs> You doing? I see ya. It's full. Really? Is there any chances at all? There's 180 checked in out of 180 seats. It's just completely full. I'm gonna have to just not do it, man. It's gonna be too much around. Know what I mean? I all right, it might be better. Thanks for your help. Thank you. Michelle's still none the wiser about Paul. Probably going out to Benidorm to work. Fell out with his girlfriend. Going out to work in Benidorm, find a new one. 
Hello. I'm not going now. I'm going to get drunk instead. Should I know where he is? Should I know where he is? What are you all laughing at me for? Dad, there's no way I can make it, man. Not that I'm not a fan of it, one. But I would just don't know. I would not know who he was. I'm now going to go to my tour manager's house to get drunk. <laughs> Which is even better. I'm getting a bit old. Thank you very much. OK, thank you. Bye. <sighs> Leslie's got just an hour and a half until she walks down the aisle. So it's just, it's nothing. It was, while she did it, it was lovely, but, oh, Christ. Um, but when she's put all the hair lacquer and everything on it, I just, oh, I like it more. <sighs> I knew this would happen. I knew it. Chris has two sons, Matthew and Jamie, from a previous marriage, but he's known Leslie for a long time. I first met at school, but um, we had no love for each other. I, I really do remember despising him and his name all the way through school. Well, she was just not my type. She was not my type at all. Too forward for me. I never, ever paid any attention to him or anything. I just, Chris, do it now. No, you just don't do it, do you? Once we left school, we both went to our separate ways. Um, Les went off, um, she had her own life, she got married, and I did the same. Fifteen years later, so... Chris had been through a lot and I'd been through a lot. We saw each other across a bit corny, but um, the pub, and once we saw each other, that was it. We just sat talking and ever since then we've just been together. Well, I've never had anything as good. It's... we're inseparable, really. With an hour to go, Leslie's called in fellow holidaymaker Alison to help. She's in my hair. I've had to take my tiara out and everything. <laughs> what am I going to do? I can see me not getting married today. Back in Manchester, there's one more passport problem for Michael. Passport. Uh, the plastic's come away from it, um, and obviously the picture is, is exposed, but the picture's still sealed against the plastic, so it's not a new pa It's not. The pitch has not been forced and slotted back in. Chris Doby and his wife Michelle are hoping to fly to Alicante. Um, I need, just need to check with managers to see whether we can just send it on a form of indemnity. And then if he does get sent back, then it's at his own cost. But I'll ring Luton just to see what they have to say. Went through the wash about three years ago. So I've travelled on it since, so it should be all right. Before agreeing to the Dobies right. signing an indemnity form, Monarch head office have asked Michael to get a second opinion. Um, she said I've got to take it to immigration, see what they say. Chris is starting to realise there's a danger he might not be allowed to fly. A bit worried. <laughs> I don't want to go on my holidays. I don't know what's happening just yet, so... It's the moment of truth for Leslie. Will her hairstyle survive the Mexican heat? How late am I? Ten minutes? Ah, shit. My hair, um, I'm happy with it for now. It's not what I would have wanted, but in a tropical place like this, what can you expect? It's, you're on holiday, aren't you? It's not England. <laughs> but at least she's made it abroad. <clears throat> Afraid you won't be able to travel. No, um, I spoke to immigration. And they said that it wouldn't be a problem, obviously, for you to come back into the country here. The problem is, if you lost the passport, the picture would be easily changed. There's nothing I can do at all. No. You'll need to get your passport sorted. If you speak to the ticket desk and then see what they say about you, actually, yeah, for the ticket or whether you can get out later. Unbelievable. Emma. What do you mean? The patch, I thought Chris's passport's knackered. That could no, be a problem. I've got another idea on it, obviously. I know, I've explained that to them and I've said I've got your driving. It matches it. It's just in case you lose your passport and then... We spent loads of money, though. Let me just go and sit at desk and see what they say. Chris goes off to try and book another flight, but his wife Michelle's not too impressed. I feel like just going home and forgetting about it. So if you can get your passport... At the sales desk, it's more bad news. There's not enough time to get a new passport and catch a flight today. I don't know whether they'll just actually extend it or they'll try and reseal it again because it's obvious that you've still got well, a couple of years. To be honest, throw this film thing away. I didn't even know his passport was like that, or else, do you know what I mean? It's 
just a nightmare, isn't it? Chris has now got to tell his wife the new travel plans. Well, yeah. On the Sunday or all the next Saturday, so only lose a day. So I'll leave here yeah, five to four Monday and then come back Sunday, ten to nine. So we're gonna lose a day, but then it's the only thing we can do. The Dobies will spend the first night of their holiday at home. It's sick for them, really, because you you want you want them to go as I mean as much as you as as I would really. So I mean, you just got to accept how they feel, really. I mean, and how you would feel in their situation. I am gutted, absolutely devastated. Been looking forward to this all day for the last sort of, couple of months. And start a new job the day after I get back from the holidays now, so it's going to be a mad week. Take your right hands and face each other, please. Miss Leslie Ann Beige. Do you accept as your legal husband to Mr. Christopher Joseph Gewitt? I do. OK, perfect. Halfway through the ceremony, and Leslie's forgotten her earlier worries. Can I have cat girl? <laughs> Jeremy, do you want to read a poem? Yes, OK. Thank you. The good and bad life says they aren't afraid to... But Leslie's getting emotional, and it's too much for eight-year-old Jamie. <laughs> Come here, Jim. Good lads. <laughs> OK. This poem will for you, OK? Mama, for you. Emotional, like, wasn't it? You, you bugger. <laughs> Mrs. Jewett. <laughs> Mrs. Leslie Jewett, you know. <laughs> hey! I mean, everybody said, your hair looks lovely, but it, it is for, for them, but not for me, do you know what I mean? In the end, it's all gone to plan. Thank you.